Hey guys, welcome back to another hand history video. Uh, just as a quick reminder, this is not a full vlog, so if you're looking for that, I will not be offended if you click on through. This is going to be another breakdown of a hand I played on Live at the Bike, uh, just kind of going through the few that I've got that I didn't manage to fit into vlogs. Yeah, yeah, so we kind of played it backwards, and it somehow right. worked. And it worked, yeah. It's like he knew that Trooper just had specifically the Ace of Spades in there. Easy game. Easy game. Was it? Oh, damn, I didn't log Matt, out. Raising up with Ace Jack Spades, and the I'm, Trooper, I know, I, I who just reloaded like, oh, yeah, a couple hundred, is going to oh, flat Ace Queen of no, Clubs. I know, now. I, I, I remember Rain, now. I remember. Rain Chingle. Rain Chingle. Oh, that was racist. Ching, Ching? Chung. It's Chung. not Chung. There's no U anywhere around. So I think the Trooper just added on, what did he add on, 200? It's C H I A. So he's now in oh, for seven. Chang, Chang. He has five on it right now. Jack 10 6. And look at this. We have. A flush draw for Brad, top top Everybody for Matt, tonight. and two overs and a gutter and a backdoor flush draw for oh, the Trooper. Oh, I didn't trooper. know that was a song. It's not up to these kids. These kids these days. Wait, they everyone know. waiting they don't know. Classic. They don't even know. Yeah. Classical music. Classical. <laughs> and the Trooper folks. They didn't know Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> I knew Mom's spaghetti. I knew that one. Trooper didn't know Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Brad Owen versus Matt Vaughn, the battle of two vloggers. So in this hand, I have Ace Jack suit under the gun, make a pretty standard open to 20. This is actually very early in the session, so it's before we had changed it to a mandatory 5-5-10. Five, five, uh, so it's just 5-5 five, five right now. I think 20 has been the standard open pretty much so far. We end up getting an interesting variety of calls here. The trooper makes the call in the hijack with ace queen, which I think is pretty standard versus an under the gun open. Don't think there's really a point in re-raising without some pretty unusual types of reads. Wheeze comes in on the button with the good old five deuce suited. Um, I'm not really a big fan of this. I just think five deuce is a little bit too weak. I'm a big fan of suited hands, but uh, even with position, it's just gonna be really hard to make money in this spot. Brad is in the big blind with ace five suited. And I think he has a pretty standard overcall here, getting a pretty fantastic price at this point. We end up going forwards to a flop of jack 10, six, two tone. Pretty much an action board given the hands that are in play. Um, Troopers got a uh, gut shot to Broadway and two overs. Brad has got the nut flush draw. I've got top hair, top kicker, and Wheeze with the five deuce suited. Doesn't have much going on, so probably not going to be in the mix here much longer. Checks to me, I decided to put out a bet. Uh, I think multi-way, it's a little tricky because we're not going to have a ton of bluffs, but on a board like this, we're at least going to have some of the better flush draws and straight draws in our range, so we can bluff with those and value bet all our top pair and better for sure. I put out a bet of 60 into 85, which I think is pretty typical sizing on this kind of board that's very connected. Uh, Trooper just insta folds, which is probably okay multi-way, but I was a little surprised he didn't give it some more thought. Weeze obviously folds the five high, and Brad has a little bit of a decision point with the nut flush draw. I think I like his call here mostly because as the preflop raiser, but facing three people, I probably won't have a super wide uh, bluffing range here. And in particular, when Brad holds the nut flush himself, he actually blocks most of my bluffs himself. So... Things like king-queen of, well, probably all the king-queen combos, but especially king-queen of hearts are going to be bluffs in my range. But uh, aside from that, there's just not a lot of flush draws I can have when I open from this position from his perspective. Maybe I can have 9 of hearts sometimes, but um, that's probably the worst hand that I would bluff with here. All of my other hands are going to be pretty strong and probably won't fold to a raise, so I think I like his call. Matt Vaughn, the Battle of Two Vloggers. They look like brothers. <laughs> Seven of clubs on the turn. Do you know who Eminem is? Really? Matt checks back his top top. And the river's an eight of spades, making a four liner. <laughs> this might go check check again now. Uh, Matt missed some value no, on the turn, no, no, for no. sure. No, no, no. But Brad could go for the bluff here, let's see. Seems like, I mean, Brad's going to have more nines here than Matt's going to. Brad is going to bet here. But a really small bluff by Brad, 50. So we saw this, him do this yesterday as a bluff multi-way as well. He loves these small bluffs, 50 into 205. 
and I think he's going to get called. From my perspective, when Brad calls, he's going to have quite a few drawing hands as well as some top pair, maybe occasionally a second pair, um, but I think he's probably going to fold a lot of the 10-9 uh, pseudo type hands since he can't have them with a flush draw. 8-9 is reasonably common, king-queen is possible, uh, as well as ace-jack, king-jack, and probably queen-jack, at least suited, maybe off-suit as well. I don't think he's going to have two pair or better very often on this wet of a board. So, like, when my range appears strong, I think he's just going to play those aggressively. Uh, so I do expect to have the best hand here pretty much all the time. The turn comes in offsuit 7, and Brad checks to me. I think it's pretty close here between betting and checking. Um, Brad's a strong player, so I do think that he would occasionally start to get aggressive with draws on this turn, since some of his draws will actually pick up equity as well. 8-9 does get there, but that's pretty much it. And I do think it's a possibility that I'll get him to bluff on the river uh, if I check back now. So I did decide to check back. Not exactly sure how I feel about it. Brad and I haven't played a lot of hands together, so I don't really have a history to kind of fall back on here. Probably one of the biggest downsides to checking back this turn is that a lot of bad river cards can come. And one of them does come on this river. It's an offsuit eight, so the flush draw misses, but now any nine makes a straight. As the announcers say, I pretty much will never have a 9 in this spot, whereas Brad can definitely have some. However, I don't think he's going to have a ton. I think 8-9 is very possible, um, definitely suited, potentially some offsuit combos as well. But Brad's been playing pretty tight, so I don't necessarily put 8-9 off in his range. 10-9 suited is possible, um, don't really think he has the offsuit combos, kind of same reasoning as for 8-9. So there's just like not a lot of other nines that are possible. As Brad is thinking about it, uh, I'm already thinking there's a pretty decent chance I'm gonna have to call it off here uh, if, he made a re if he makes a reasonable size bet. However, he goes for very interesting sizing. He bets just 50, which is around a quarter of the pot. And I think right away that this is something Brad's probably gonna do with his whole range here, both bluffs and value. Um, Brad is someone who definitely values balance from what I've seen in his videos, and he's going to want to choose similar sizings with all of his hands. And he's going to choose his sizings a lot based on what I'm representing. On this run out, I'm representing hands that C bet once and then chose to get a free card uh, to try to realize some equity. I'm also representing a few just bets and give ups, but probably not many. Um, as well as some um, very thin value bet hands. So something like maybe queen jack suited, king jack suited. Um, but I don't have a lot of those hands under the gun. So he's probably going to put me on a lot of missed draws, which means uh, he can bluff pretty much everything that he has that missed. Uh, he can also value bet reasonably thinly. And he's going to want to go small because my missed draws will just not be able to call. Uh, whereas everything else won't want to face a large sizing on this exact run out when... Again, as the announcer said, Brad has more 9x than I do. Uh, so given that I think he is going to be, you know, balanced here between bluffs and value, and I'm getting 5 to 1 now, I only have to be good 20% of the time, and this is one of the best hands that I play this way, if not the best hand I play this way. It's definitely a mandatory call, so I put it in, and of course Brad has the bluff this time, so we take that one down. And Brad's quarter pot bluff does not work. Interesting bet by Brad Hall. Not enough to get Matt Vaughn off top top. You know, if he overbet there, I think it works. He doesn't even look 21. Most of the time. It's like 16. You graduated yeah. from high school yet? What were you guys say? I knew she didn't make a mistake. I had a conditional hair recently. People finally thought I was like 21 for a little while. Not that I haven't. Did that happen to me?